Good evening. Welcome to our Collision Bible Study. It is Thursday, April 22nd. Thank those of you that continue to watch these. I know it gets harder and harder just relying on videos, but great news for you, okay? Great news. Had a church call today to offer us their facility. Good evening, Juan. Uh, meeting Monday night with another church to do, uh, who's offered us their facility. So it's just a matter of the right price, the right facility, the right circumstances, but God has opened up two doors for us. This is amazing. This is amazing. Let me tell you one of the reasons it's amazing is, good evening, Alicia. Uh, because of the pandemic, uh, churches were meeting in schools. Every school in the ABC school district had a church meeting in it. In fact, when we went to Palms, the reason we went to Palms because it was the only, only school available in the ABC school district. So, all of those churches now are looking for churches to rent because they can't get back into the schools. So these churches have had several other churches contact them asking to rent their facility. And God has opened the door for us in two of them. So this is great news, great news. So we'll be starting, hopefully everything works right. We'll be starting May 16th, which is the Sunday after Mother's Day. Woohoo! Can't wait. Uh, let me open with a prayer. Father, thank you for being so gracious to us, uh, protecting us, uh, holding us together, opening doors for us. Uh, so God, we're going to get into your word again tonight. We just pray that you make it come alive to us. Amen. All right. Uh, we're in Acts chapter 16. Um, I'm going to be starting to read it. I'm going to do this verse by verse. So it says, once when we were going to the place of prayer, this is, uh, this is now Paul and, and his and his people and his and the, his followers, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. Now, a few things I want to point out here. Good evening, Juan. I mean, uh, John. Good evening to you too. Um, first of all, that the, it said the disciples were going to their their place of prayer. So they had a place that they went to regularly for, for prayer, which is, which is awesome. Uh, we read earlier in, in Acts in 2.42, the early church, it says they devoted themselves to prayer. They devoted themselves to prayer. Devoted means they were loyal. They never wavered. They, they were committed. They were committed to regular prayer. So here's, here's Paul and his people going to their regular place of prayer. So I'm just wondering how committed you are to, to prayer. Do you have a regular prayer time uh, devoted to God? Because they did, which tells us that we should also. Another interesting thing here is that this demon-possessed girl could predict the future. Uh, apparently, demons are capable of doing that. Demons are capable of predicting the future. That's what this girl did. It said, it said she was... A slave girl had a spirit by which she predicted the future and made a great deal of money for her owners. Uh, so what, is, what should this tell us? First, that if someone were to predict your future, they would either come from either God or a demon. The only two that are capable of doing it, God and demons. So if someone predicts your, your future, it comes from one of those. God is not in the business of doing that. God is not a fortune teller. God is not a seer. God is not in that business of doing that. That means that fortune tellers, palm readers, tea readers, all of that come directly from demons. Are you hearing this? From demons. Don't be surprised if you go to one where they actually are, predict a future and it comes true. They're apparently, they're capable of doing that. The, own the owners of this girl made a great deal of money with her powers. Because think of it, if if you were to go to a fortune teller and that fortune teller told you something and it came true, you would be like, wow, you would go back again. You go, that's what was happening here. They were they were making a great deal of money. So this should make it obvious to us that that it is it's literally pure evil. Pure evil to go to anyone who supposedly predicts the future. You are, you are literally stepping into Satan's territory, going to a 
palm reader, going to a fortune teller, someone someone reading your palms, even if it's just for fun. You, I don't know if you are young enough to remember you eat Ouija boards. Uh, the kids were playing that just for fun. But you hear all kinds of stories of, of demonic things that happened where the where the it, it moved on its own. Uh, I've heard stories of people levitating doing that. I've heard stories of people communicating with, with the dead through that. That's all demonic. God doesn't do those things. Demons are capable of doing those things. So be very careful when you don't don't ever don't ever even consider doing something like that. Uh, and then be careful also if someone just I, I've just re recently heard of some saw someone on Facebook share this that that someone came to them that they didn't know and predicted something to them something saying that God was going to do. Uh, be careful even of that. Uh, you don't know this person. You don't know where that information is coming from. Uh, scripture stories that of this happening it always is God using someone that they that they know to reveal this to people, and and it, and it happens many times in Scripture. Think of, God speak to us in three ways, and I've shared this with you. God can speak directly to you. God speak to us through His words. And God can use other people to speak to us. How many times have you been in church and someone stood and shared something where you just felt convicted, kind of like, wow, I relate to that. Well, I've had people that have come up to me at different times and say different things. They come. I've had a woman well, years ago, had a woman come up to me, and I can't remember what she told me, but it was something in lines, you know, that God is going to use you to do this or to do that. And she walks away and I'm kind of like, well, who was that? Who was that woman? Who was that? I don't know if she came from God or if she came from a demon. You have to be really careful with those things, okay? Verse 17. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Now, isn't this interesting? Isn't this interesting? This demon-possessed girl that was, a for, that was for, doing fortune-telling is telling the people who Paul and the people are. He's, she's telling them. She's, she's hollering. She's shouting. The, the, these men are servants of the Most High God. They're telling you how to be saved. Does that sound like something that Satan would do? Well, listen to this now. They're, 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 this is interesting, okay? Uh, many Bible scholars believe that she was doing this to discredit what Paul and, and what Paul was, was 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 doing. You see, the Jews, the Jews were totally against divination or any fortune telling. They were they knew the law. If I were to go back into Leviticus and Numbers. It, it says over and over and over where God says not to not to go to divination, not to do not to do it. The Jews knew that. The Jews knew that they wouldn't they wouldn't even think of going anywhere near something like that. So here's this woman now telling the, the, everybody that these are men of God who are telling you how to be saved in order to discredit what they had done. Almost like saying, listen, that's, that's why they're able to do miracles. People, the, the Jews then would look at, these, at Paul and his men saying, you know, are you capable of doing these things because you are like this girl? You're, 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 you're demon-possessed. Jesus was accused of being demon-possessed. Jesus was literally accused of being demon-possessed. So they could discredit the miracles and the, and the, and the work they were doing by getting people to think that that they that Satan demons were giving them that power. So, so in verse 18, it says, she kept us up for many days. Many days where she kept hollering this. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, didn't say to the woman, said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. Finally, Paul has enough, and in the name of Jesus, he tells the demon to leave. Obvious to me that the power is in the name of Jesus, not in Paul. 
It wasn't like Paul cast that demon out of her. Jesus cast the, de the demon out of her. Uh, takes, takes incredible power to do something like that. Takes incredible faith to accomplish something like this. Uh, let, let me read this. This is going to be in our in our study tomorrow for our daily devotion. But let me just read it to you here in 17, 18 through 20. It says, Jesus, re Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed from that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in, pri in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? They were not capable of driving it out. And Jesus replied, because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth, your faith is small as a mustard seed. They were not able to, even though they had done it before, they were not able to drive out this demon because they didn't have enough faith. It takes faith. It takes incredible faith to do something like that. Now, I, I, I want to get into this a little bit because many people, many people question me all the time about, should you, if you, if you meet someone that's demon-possessed, should you pray over that person and ask Jesus to, to, to cast the demon out of, out of that person? And here's what I would tell you. If you are strong in your faith, if you have great faith, if you are a prayer warrior, then yes. But make sure you're strong in your faith because you are dealing with mighty powers. Mighty powers. I mean, these demons are capable of predicting the future. Can you? These demons can do, have incredible power. So don't ever get into something like this thinking that you are going to do this. No, it takes, it takes incredible humility. It takes incredible humility and faith to realize the power comes from Jesus. And if you're going to cast a demon out of somebody, it's going to be because Jesus does it, not but you do it. But... Jesus uses your faith to do this. The, in the story I just read you in Matthew, disciples weren't able to do this, Jesus said, because they didn't have enough faith. So make sure that your faith is strong if you ever want to do something like that. But I wish more Christians would, 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 would try to do that. If, if, you're, if, you are, if you meet someone that you think may be either suppressed by a demon, possibly possessed by a demon, yes, you need to pray with that person. You need to pray with them. But but be prepared. I'll, I'll share the story with them. I shared it before, but let me share it again. We were reaching on church youth in, uh, in, 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 in our church that I was at several years ago. And, and many of them have come to know the Lord. And we had a special retreat in Big Bear for them. And some of them had given their lives to the Lord, but others had not given their lives to the Lord yet. And we were up on the retreat, and retreats get pretty heavy. And we were praying over different people. And there was this young boy that was there. He was probably about 17 years old, 16, 17, that we were praying over. And it was very obvious that we were dealing with a demon. Very obvious. Very obvious. And... And the, the, the people that were praying over her, the leaders that were praying over her, kept on praying. And then they got, they got more serious and more serious because they realized what they were dealing with. But some of the young people in the room were not ready for that. So when they finally made connection with the demon and the demon and the, this, deep, this heavy voice came out of this, this deep, deep voice came out of this young man, immediately I knew it was a demon because I had witnessed that several times in my in my in my spiritual journey it scared the the young people so much it was winter time they were in their socks barefooted and they ran outside and, and were afraid to come back in again you have to really be careful when you deal with that kind of stuff because it's real it's real but but at the same time don't be afraid of it too many christians are afraid of it you you have to be strong in your faith. You have to have faith. You have to believe in the power of, of Jesus to actually cast out demons. So in this case, I was I shut it down immediately because I knew from experience that even if we were to cast that demon out, 
The demon then looks for an empty house to go to. Well, there were unbelievers in this, in, in our, and I have no idea what they were involved with, uh, what their past was. The demon could easily have gone into one of them. So I shut it down. But Paul, here, Paul cast the demon out of this young girl. Um, verse 19, when the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. So here they are now getting arrested. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. So because of this now, because of what they had done, they, they, I mean, Satan is upset now with, with casting this demon out of this girl. So, so the crowd gets the magistrate, magistrates to condemn what they did, and they were punished. It says they were severely, they were severely beat, severely flogged. Now, you've heard me share about this before with flogging. This is what happened to Jesus. It's where they tie you to a post or something. They strip your back back, and they take a whip and they hit you with it 39 times. Breaks your skin open, breaks your, it welts first and then it breaks it open. It's severe pains. And they were severely flogged, it says. Severely flogged. Then they were thrown in prison and chained in prison as a result of what they had done. This is serious. Uh... But listen to this, verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. <laughs> Imagine this. They're arrested, they're chained, they had just been flogged and severely beaten. It says severely beaten plus severely flogged. <clears throat> so beating could well have been what happened to Jesus where they hit him in the face so many times they literally tore the beard off his face. So they probably were hitting Paul and, and, and Silas in the same way. And here they are in prison praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. The other prisoners were kind of like sitting there like amazed, kind of like these guys have just been beaten up. Look at their back, look at their face. And here they are singing and pr praying and singing to God. Now, now, this is what this tells me, okay? When you go to church on Sunday, most churches, they sing, okay? They worship, they sing. Hopefully, in most churches, it's not true, 97 said don't, but of the ones that do, and, and I'm praying that this will be the case with collision, there will be unbelievers in the, in the, in the audience, unbelievers that, can, that let's use collision as an example. We, we start to meet back again. Unbelievers visit us, and now it's time for worship. Now, now, now listen to this. Unbelievers are watching you. They're watching you. Before I was a believer, when and I've shared this with you, I went to Calvary Chapel, and I was sitting there, and then they, they were singing some songs, and I remember sitting there looking. They were all, most of them were standing, their hands, hands up in the air, and I remember looking out, around at them like, holy smokes, are you guys serious or what? They were like, eyes up they were like and finally I closed my eyes I just closed my eyes and then I that's when I felt something incredible and I realized now I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit make sure when you go to church especially if you come to collision when it's time to worship worship really worship God worship like Paul and Silas did where where it caused the people to stare at them. Because unbelievers want to know, is your faith real? Are you real? Are you excited about, are, are you excited about Jesus? It's, it's hard for an unbeliever to, to believe that if they come to a church 
and people are singing and they're just all sitting down and they're just kind of mouthing the words and there's no life, there's no energy. Not very exciting, is it? But if they come to church and people are standing up and people are are, are shouting with the, the, the words out, they're, 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 they're filled with the Spirit, that causes the unbeliever to look at you, to look at us. Amen? Let's go on. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prisoner's door open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. Now, here's why he was about to kill himself. If you're a guard and a prisoner escapes, now you are put to death. You are put to death. So when he sees all the prison gates open and the prisoners released, he took the sword to kill himself because he knew that his life was going to be taken. So he was about to kill himself. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. None of us escaped. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He saw Paul and Silas beaten. He saw them praying and singing. He saw what God had done with this earthquake, and he realized that these men were men of God. So he asked them, What do I have to do to be saved? I bet you the other people in the jail were asking that same thing. They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in the house. They, 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 they told them what, how they had to be saved and then they, they shared the word with them. At, the hour of, at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately all... In, him and his whole family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. Oh, Paul was a mighty warrior for the Lord. Paul was an evangelist everywhere he went, whether it was prison, I don't care what, it never stopped him from telling people about Jesus. And Jesus used him mightily, mightily. Here in a prison with a jailer, with a jailer, leading them to the Lord. Let's us be just as just as courageous as Paul was. Let's us let us be just as excited about our faith as what Paul was. Let us be bold like Paul was. Let us share the gospel like Paul was, like Paul did. Let us lead others to the Lord like Paul did. May God use collision to do that. May God use each one of you in collision to do that. Lily, I, I, I hope, I know you go to another church. Go there in the morning. Don't leave that church. Go there in the morning. I hope that you're able to visit us on Sunday nights. I, I, I hope that your strong faith will be a witness to others uh, in, 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 that visit collision. Let's get ready. Let's get ready for God to use us mightily and do a mighty work. Amen. Let me close with a prayer. Father, I, I thank you for the doors that you've opened for Collision. I thank you, God, that you've kept the people of Collision close to you. They haven't, they haven't just ran off on us. Uh, God, I pray that you bring them all back. I, bring, I pray that you bring others to Collision, others even from other churches that will join us on a Sunday night. I pray that you bring unbelievers there to Sunday night so we as believers can can show them how excited we are about our faith, about our, about our love for Jesus. God, use us mightily. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining tonight. God bless you all. Uh, I hope to see many of you tomorrow morning at our daily devotion at 8 o'clock. Get ready. We're about ready to start collision back up again. It looks like next month, May 16th, the week after Mother's Day. Amen. Thanks for joining me tonight. Have a great night. God bless.